first report help recording on the structure of the report made reference to an outlier section. While I won't repeat what I covered in the first recording, I did just want to remind you that the first help session included more detail on how to write this section of the report, whereas the aim of this session is to focus on the practical working that we need to do. Before we do any analysis of data, we should consider the possibility of outliers. As we have seen during the lectures, their presence can cause numerical measures to be distorted. The idea is therefore to consider the possibility of outliers before undertaking any of the other analysis, and an early section within the report is therefore logical so as to make clear that this analysis has been included and therefore to clearly define the data set that will be used for the remainder of the report. In terms of the calculations, you will only need to consider the possibility of outliers for the one year returns data, as this is our focus. And if you do find any outliers, you will need to then think about whether to leave them within the data set or remove them completely, such that the whole row would be deleted. So the best way to check for outliers is to calculate the z-score for each data value, and this requires that we calculate the mean and standard deviation of the data first. We can use the Excel functions of average and standard deviation to get these values for the one year returns column of data. And so we can calculate these in any of the empty cells to the right of the block of data. In Excel, remember we must indicate that we are calculating a function by using the equals symbol to start our formula. If we type in equals average open brackets E2 colon E487 close brackets say into cell J2 we will get the average and if we type in equals standard deviation so STDEV is the function we use open brackets then E2 to E487 close brackets say into cell J3 we will get the sample standard deviation we can then use column G to create the z-score of each one year return value. Set up your own formula to implement the z-score. So for example, to get the z-score in the first, the z-score of the first one year return, which is found in cell E2, we would type in equals open brackets E2 minus dollar sign J dollar sign 2 close brackets divided by, so use the slash, dollar sign J dollar sign 3 and that gets typed into cell G2. We put the dollar signs around the column and row parts of the J2 and J3 cell references to create what is known as an absolute reference. By including these symbols, when you cut and paste the first formula down through the G column, Excel will automatically update the E column reference so that each of the rows refers to the correct one year value since this uh, but it will leave the references to J2 and J3 fixed which is what we want since this is where the average and standard deviation values are that we need to use in every calculation so basically you want the E reference to update so it just gets typed in as E2 but the J2 and J3 references must be as absolute references because you are only referring to one average and one standard deviation so you want them to be fixed every time the formula is pasted into that G column. So copy and paste down the column so that you do get the z-score for all of the one year returns. Remember that a z-score of more than three standard deviations above or below the mean suggests the value is an outlier. If you haven't already sorted your data based on the one year returns, use a custom sort to do this by blocking on all the columns of the data from column A through to column G with the z-scores. Then click on the sort and filter button and do a custom sort so that you can select a sort on the basis of column G, which of course are your z-scores. Then it is just a matter of scanning through the column to see if you have any z-scores of more than positive 3 or less than negative 3. Please note that this process of looking for z-scores more than positive 3 or less than negative 3 is only completed once. Depending on what you find, you will then need to decide whether or not to remove any outliers. The main thing is to keep in mind that you will need to justify your decision, and so while potentially we can leave in 
or remove outliers, you should think about what we are trying to achieve with this report to help make and justify your decision. That's it for this session. The next session will be to help with the one variable analysis.